All right, everybody, I am back with a brand new DC update. And hopefully this is the last Joker specific video that I end up doing. But things are way worse than what the studio anticipated. And I think even as a fan, uh, worse than what I anticipated. And we're going to talk about this here today. And we're going to talk about where we're headed and what the challenges are going to be for Warner Brothers moving forward. Uh, but first, I am on the road to 20,000 subs, and I can only get there with your help. So if you enjoy this video, please take the time to like the video, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and you will be notified as new videos go up. And if you're a longtime viewer, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. I will be back also tomorrow with a regular DC update with all of the different various bits of news. And I have a review coming up later today for the movie Nope, which I just watched for the very first time yesterday. And I definitely have some things to say about that. So that review will be up later today as well. But let's talk about the Joker. It is worse than what they anticipated. So they anticipated this movie to make between 55 and $60 million domestically over the weekend and about $120 million overseas. And we're going to take a look at what it actually did. So here we go. Joker 2 earns $40 million in the film's domestic opening weekend, which is up to $20 million than what they were expecting. This equates to an almost three times lower than the first film's opening weekend. It was also lower than the opening weekends of The Flash and The Marvels, and almost the same as Morbius. And the budget was over was about $200 million, and that was prior to taking in the account for advertising, but they're not really advertising this movie right now. In fact, we haven't heard James Gunn talk about this film at all, and we're going to talk about why here in just a minute, and I have to make a correction from my previous video. Now, as far as the overseas box office, I didn't grab the picture, which I wish I would have, but it was expected to make about $120 million overseas. And again, it made about a third less than that. So it is at about $80 million overseas and was the number one movie over the weekend for a combined total of $120 million. For a movie to make back its money and start profiting, it has to make about twice its original budget. So at a minimum... This film would have to make $400 million, and that doesn't take into account the advertising. Luckily, the advertising is not double. It is just whatever they spend on the advertising. And the reason why you have to double your budget is because the theaters take 50% of the ticket sales. But when it comes to marketing, that is all on the studio. That's just a linear takeaway. And so this movie has to make probably about... $450 million before the studio would see any type of a profit. It's not going to make that in its theater run. If it only made $120 million total over this weekend, there is no way it's going to get anywhere near that number. And I don't think it's going to get it in the movie sales as well. I actually have no desire to add this to my movie catalog. I did not like this film. My wife did not like this film. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and what some people believe this film to be versus what it actually is. So first off, I do have to apologize in my last video. I actually thought that this film was being distributed under DC Studios, but it is not. It is actually just a Warner Brothers production. Now, some people ask how that can be. Uh, someone actually brought up on Twitter that it was very interesting that Superman, the Christopher Reeve story, is being released as a DC Studios production, even though they had nothing to do with it. They're just distributing it, but they they threw their logo on it. And our movie news made the comment that because they specifically, DC Studios specifically sought out and bought Superman, you know, the, the Christopher Reeve story, and that the Joker was in production long before DC Studios came into existence. Well, I had to chime in because so was the Penguin. Yet the Penguin has the DC Studios logo on it. So the studio is cherry picking what they want to put under their banner, which is kind of weird. Um, in reality, the general audience doesn't care. To the general audience and the perception as the public as a whole, 
is that the Joker is a DC product. It doesn't matter what kind of a label they throw on it, whether it's Warner Brothers, whether it is DC Studios, to the general public and the general audience that they're going for, it's all a DC, it's all a DC production. And this leads me to what I wanted to discuss in this video, which is the perception of the audience. The, the fan base is fractured, and I do believe that it is beyond repair. I would be extremely surprised if this results in something good moving forward. People are afraid to go DC, go to see DC movies right now. Why? If you look at ticket sales and engagement with the audience back when Man of Steel came out, you had Batman versus Superman, you had the Suicide Squad, you had Wonder Woman, you had Aquaman, boom, those ticket sales continued to rise. And then after Aquaman, what happened? Everything became a comedy. Hamada took over. They they made this major change in the course and the trajectory that they were on and turned everything into a comedy and the ticket sales tanked. The only time they started to go back up was when Black Adam came out and they promised that Henry Cavill was back. And boy, the internet was talking about this when it happened. There, it was news everywhere. Everybody was talking about it. The general public was happy he was back. The, the fans were happy he was back. There was a few people out there that were complaining about the color of the suit, which is ridiculous. But they were complaining whether it was Justice League or Justice League. And it... That, but regardless, that's when ticket sales started to go back up. And then James Gunn comes in, makes this announcement. He's yanking Henry Cavill away. He's going in a different direction. New Superman, new everything. And the ticket sales went down the drain again. Now, I will tell you that I talk about movies a lot. You can ask the people that live with me. My wife is very much a, uh, a regular consumer when it comes to film. She's not even what you would say is a, a film lover, but she tolerates the fact that I love movies. And she definitely tolerates the fact that I like superheroes. And she is what you would definitely put in the general audience. She thinks it is stupid that they're doing a reboot. It, she said it doesn't make any sense when they had all these characters in place. When I go out and I talk to the majority of people that are just general audience people, they all agree. I haven't met one person yet, except for some fans that I think are gun fans. I haven't met a single person yet that said, hey, yeah, it's a good idea to reboot, that this is going to work out well. Not one. Most people are like, why? Why are they getting somebody new? The perception by the general audience out there right now is that Henry Cavill will be coming back. There's a lot of people, the general audience doesn't even know that there is a Superman movie coming out, and you have to look at this. The only reason us fans know is because we're plugged into this. We're on, we're on social media, but the average person has not seen a single thing, a single thing in regards to Superman. They don't even know that this movie is coming. It's a fact. The general audience does not even know that a Superman movie is coming. The only people that do are the fans. And most of the fans also think that this is a poor choice to be going down this road. There is a group of people that are really happy it's happening. And I'm happy for them. That's great. But there's a big group of us, the, more, the majority of us, that don't. So what does this have to do with the Joker? Well, people are afraid to go see DC movies at this stage. They just have no desire. They're tired of it. They're tired of the studio shenanigans. They've had the rug pulled out from them too many times, and they don't trust what Warner Brothers is doing. And everything is under the Warner Brothers banner, whether it's Warner Brothers Productions or DC Studios. It is still all under Warner, Bro Warner Brothers, all under David Zaslav, period. It just is. And anybody who tells you otherwise, they're ignorant because they keep talking about how they want to bring in the general audience. And the general audience sees everything as just DC. It's either DC or it's Marvel. It's, there's no Warner Brothers DC Studios. The general audience doesn't care. They just don't care. And it has been, the fan base has been fractured beyond repair at this stage. I don't see Superman making any money. I, I do believe that it's going to end up being a soft release uh, worse than what 
the the Batman did. Now we don't know what the budget is for Superman. We don't know what the true budget is because they're not talking about it. The rumors are that the budget is extremely high, that they're putting their eggs all in one basket to try and bring everybody in. But this movie does not seem like a Superman film. Every week we're hearing about a new character going into this film as, you know, they're adding somebody else. And with Alan Tudyk coming in, probably as, you know, people are speculating that he is going to be um, Brainiac, there's too many characters in this film. There just is. Uh, and, and to try and do mental gymnastics and say that it's okay to have as many characters as they're going to do because they're probably all not going to have a whole lot of screen time, they're still in the movie. They're still in the movie, and they're going to distract from the main character who was supposed to be Superman. The suit looks awful. The production looks terrible. They haven't shown us a single bit of film from the, the movie, and it comes out here in you know in July, in like nine months. There is a lot of ground that Warner Brothers has to cover to make this a success. And they're not doing themselves any favors at this stage. I have a lot of reservations about where they're going in the future. And my wife, I could tell you, is not interested at all. She doesn't want to reboot. She thinks it's stupid they're not continuing with the people that they had. It's exhausting to try and keep up with all this stuff. And that's the the view of the general audience. There was no reason to do a reboot. None. Whatsoever. You could say what you wanted about those films, but before everything turned into a comedy... Everyone was going to the movies. Everybody was going to the movies. You cannot deny that. Regardless of what the critical and the audience reception was online, it doesn't matter. What only matters at the end of the day are the ticket sales. And so that's where we stand at this stage, guys. I don't see a way out of this. It's an uphill battle for Warner Brothers. I think they've stepped into a, or they've put themselves into a situation that is very much an uphill battle. And I don't think they realize how tough it is actually going to be. And if Superman fails, it is going to destroy the DC brand for a very long time. All right, guys, I would love to hear your thoughts below. I appreciate all the support. We will see you on the next video.